Hi, this is Kathy from Gadget Stop 321, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at Pannonia Cheerio Water Bus. This is an ink that Pannonia has made for Mike Madison over at Ink Dependence. And it has an interesting story behind the name. I'll link the video that Mike has done talking about the story behind the name and the characteristics of the ink. And there's an actual swatch of the ink here on the label. Now, I'm noticing in my viewfinder that it's looking a bit more blue than it does in real life. This is actually more of a teal. It leans a little more green. I would call it almost a minty green, but it's it's not like a minty green that's kind of pale. This is a, a darker, more saturated mint green. There's also a swatch on the box. This is nice packaging. It's got Mike's logo on it from his channel, Ink Dependence. And there's a sticker on top with another swatch. And you can see one of the interesting characteristics of this ink. Instead of having shimmer suspended in it, maybe see down at the bottom here. It's got blue pigment suspended in it. And just like shimmer, the blue pigment settles out at about the same speed that shimmer does. So if you're familiar with shimmer ink, if you've used it before, you'll know about how fast that settles out. And when you go to fill your pen, you'll need to give it a little shake. Now in this video, I will be testing Cheerio Water Bus in a variety of pens and nib sizes ranging from a Pilot Extra Fine to a 1.5 stub nib. I'll do a writing sample on this 52 GSM Tomoe River paper. I'll compare Pannonia Cheerio Water Bus to a couple other similar inks from my collection. And finally, I'll take a look at the results of the water resistance test. Now when I ordered Cheerio Water Bus. I ordered it from Mike's shop online and I also ordered a little sticker that came packaged in a nice little envelope. I also ordered a Yovo nib. I got a fine and it's got Mike's logo laser engraved on the nib and I've put it on my Leonardo Momento Zero and so you'll get to see how that writes. And in a previous order, I got one of Mike's handmade pen rests. Him and Audrey make these. And I also got a rickshaw sleeve that's got his logo on it. And I, that's why I got the logo nib. I thought it would make a, a nice little set. The writing sample that I did with Cheerio Water Bus using a glass dip nib... With the first dip, it came off the nib pretty quickly, and I was a little bit concerned, but I must have just not dipped it in the ink far enough, because when I dipped it again, it wrote just fine. And you can see, usually I do a scribble and then write. It gets that first little blob of ink off the nib and then writes a little more uniformly. But since I dipped it a second time, it is a little bit heavier here at the beginning. The swatch that I made with tweezers is pretty uniform until you get to the little drip here at the end. The drip at the end of the swatch doesn't have any sheen, but there is a darker halo, and you see that to a, a certain degree in the letters also. Normally I begin my writing samples with the finer nibs, but I'm going to begin today with my Jinhao X750. It has a 1.5 stub nib. Nice and wet and very smooth, very enjoyable in this wide nib. Next, I've got a Caveco Lily Put. It has a stainless steel broad nib. 
Again, this was very pleasant. Not glassy smooth. I could hear. I wouldn't, sometimes I call it the scritchy scratchy sound. That's usually what I hear when I'm writing with like a sailor medium nib or a platinum medium nib. This was just the sound of the nib sliding over the paper. It didn't even really feel chalky but there was just the slightest hint of feedback that kept it from feeling glassy smooth, just enough to make it very pleasant. Next, I've got my Pilot Metropolitan. It has a stainless steel calligraphy medium nib. On this nice, smooth Tomoe River paper, this was very pleasant. Now, on some of the other writing samples, it felt a little dry. You can see that this nib is a little bit drier than these two wider nibs, and it felt like it. But on this paper, it was very nice. In fact, very smooth. Next, I've got a Caveco Percao. It has a stainless steel medium nib. I need to add that this is a Percao. A little bit of feedback with this nib. It actually felt kind of chalky, but very pleasant. Next, I've got a Leonardo Memento Zero in the jade finish. I've replaced the nib that came on my Memento Zero with one of Mike's Yovo fine nibs that's been engraved with his logo. This nib is really well suited for this ink. It's nice and wet. It puts down just a very pleasant fine line. The nib that I had on this before was an extra fine and this is just a bit wider than that extra fine. And Mike's wife is a nib smith and I don't know if she's worked on these nibs or checked them or done any kind of tuning on them, but this is just perfectly tuned. I love the wetness of it. It's smooth without being glassy smooth. It hasn't been over polished. It's just very pleasant. And I want to show the reverse writing with this nib. The ink flow is nice and consistent, and it goes from a fine to probably an ultra extra fine. This is more fine than my extra fine nib that I have. And when I first tried it in reverse, it was scratchy when writing to the right. So I just used a little bit of Micromesh. Here's my sheet of Micromesh that I got a few years ago from Goulet Pens. And so I just did a few swipes to the right and then tested it until it stopped being scratchy and now I've got a very versatile nib. Next I've got a Faber-Castell Ambition. It has an extra fine stainless steel nib. very nice for an extra fine nib and you can see this extra fine is a bit more narrow than this Yovo fine nib. 
This is the pen that I was excited about using this ink in once I saw what color it was going to be. I like using teals and turquoises with this flamingo colored pen, but this Leonardo Memento Zero with the fine nib was a tough act to follow. This extra fine is, looks like it's almost as wet as this fine nib, but just that extra amount of width allows this ink to really show off its interesting properties. That little bit of halo gives your writing just some nice characters, some adds a bit of interest to this ink. And finally, I've got a Pilot 78G. It has an extra fine stainless steel nib. I was kind of surprised by the performance of this extra fine nib with this ink. Usually with really saturated inks like this, this Pilot Extra Fine performs pretty well, but this ink on every writing sample that I did just felt scratchy. And I kept dipping the nib in ink. It felt like, you know, maybe... There wasn't enough ink in the feed, but I don't think that was the problem. It's just this ink is just not suited for this nib. All right, while this writing sample dries, I'll take a look at some of the others. The writing sample that I did on Rhodia, the glass dip nib, I did my little scribble first, and then the writing sample was very pleasant and I don't know if I'll be able to get in close enough for you to see. It's kind of later in the evening, so I don't have any sun coming through my window. But you can see a bit of a, ha a darker halo on the letters. And the swatch had some... You saw that there could possibly be some shading, depending on how wet the nib is. And down here on the little drip at the end of the swatch you can see that halo the larger nibs were very pleasant but the nib that stole the show was the fine nib the Yovo fine nib on my Leonardo Memento Zero I'm a fan of fine nibs and this was just very enjoyable with this ink the Faber-Castell Ambition had a bit of feedback and after I did this writing sample I went over I went over the micro mesh with this nib and smoothed it a little bit. It's not glassy smooth. It's still got a little bit of feedback but it's a little more pleasant. You know and even when I did this writing sample I said it, it was nice. Just enough feedback that for some people it might be a little borderline of whether it was pleasant or unpleasant. My Metropolitan on this paper though felt just a bit too dry. It wasn't very pleasant and as usual the Percale was chalky but enjoyable. Now I did another writing sample with the glass dip nib after the blue particles had settled out of the ink. I thought maybe that halo is just from the it's not blue dye. It's the I'm I'm forgetting the name of the the blue particles. I'll think of it in a minute. But even after those particles settled out of the ink and I did a writing sample, I'm still getting a bit of halo to the letters. And let me see. You might be able to see it on my tissue whether where I was cleaning off the nibs. I don't know if it's going to show up, but I think there's a dye component to this ink, a couple of dye components, a green and a blue, and then pigment. That's a, There are blue pigment particles that settle out, and I'm not seeing it. Let me see. 
yeah maybe on this tissue you can see there's a blue pigment that stays in the middle that doesn't move as the paper's absorbing it. I just thought that was kind of interesting. On my copy paper, Cheerio Water Bus looks less interesting. It looks like just a flat green ink. It, it even loses some of the mintiness. It performs pretty well. I'm not really seeing any feathers, and it was pleasant enough to write with. It does soak through the paper quite a bit, which on this copy paper, most of the inks do. But with it being a darker ink, you just see it more. And on this poorer quality paper, even the Faber-Castell Ambition felt scratchy. But the wetter nibs felt a bit smoother. They were pretty pleasant to write with. And I think, I don't know, since pigment is particles, this is just my hypothesis, I think those pigment particles almost, in some cases, can act like little ball bearings on the ni under the nib, between the nib and the paper, and make it a bit smoother. But since these fine nibs are f so fine, and they're either drier or just, you know, finer, you don't have as many of those little particles providing lubrication between the nib and the paper. I don't know, but what I do know is this fine nib and above were very pleasant. And on my writing sample that I did in my old Leuchtturm bullet journal, this Leuchtturm paper does a fantastic job on this wide stub nib of showing off that halo effect that this ink has on the paper. That looks really nice. Most of my turquoise and teal inks lean a little bit more to the blue side, so the only two inks that I have in my collection that really compare to Cheerio Water Bus are Mont Blanc Emerald. Now, this one, if you put it down, Cheerio Water Bus, if you put it down heavy enough, can get a bit darker than Mont Blanc Emerald. And if you know what Mont Blanc Emerald looks like, it's more green than what it appears right here. So these two are really very similar in appearance of the color. And Lamy Tourmaline is maybe, well, I won't say that it's closer. It's closer to the dark end of the spectrum, but it doesn't get as, it doesn't shade as light as Cheerio Waterbus does. But again, this is much more green than it appears um, in my viewfinder. For my water resistance test, I did a writing sample on a little piece of rhodia paper and submerged it in water for 10 minutes. And this is very interesting. The blue that is left behind must be the pigment particles. It's just a very pretty powdery blue. And you can see the, dry, the drier medium nibs and the little fine, extra fine nibs. You're not getting as much of that pigment on the paper, so it's a little less legible after the, the green is washed away. But in the wider nibs and in this Leonardo Memento Zero, that fine nib, it just is really legible. Okay, on the Tomoe River paper, we didn't have any bleed through, and it didn't really get that deep into the paper. We do have some show through because it is a pretty saturated and somewhat dark ink. And my favorites, of course, are the two wider nibs. And my very favorite, as you probably guessed, is my Yovo Fine Nib. It's nice and wet. You're still able to see that halo effect in the writing and it's not it's not super in your face in fact when you're reading it you may not even you know 
notice that uh, hey, there's a there's a halo of it's green with a halo of blue around it, but you know there's just something to it that you can say hey that that's interesting that looks really interesting. All right, I had plans to ink up a different pen from my collection, but I'm gonna have to put that on hold. This is going to be the next pen I ink up, and I'm going to be using. Cheerio Water Bus. All right, if you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.